Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is time for our Motown Writers and Michigan Literary Network virtual meetup. I am your host and guest speaker this morning, Dr. DeAndrea Matthews, and it is my pleasure to present to this group because this is the group where I got my start as a writer back in 2012. Thank you, Sylvia Hubbard, who has been both my uh, virtual mentor as well as uh, somewhat of a writing mentor to me as well. She is the one that really introduced me to the world of publishing and the world of being an author. So thank you, Sylvia, for the opportunity. I love every chance I get a chance to either come back to the physical meeting or to do a virtual meetup with the Motown Writers Network because this is my home. Uh, I am a native Detroiter, for those of you who are not aware. Cast Tech graduate. So any Cast Tech graduates out there, we represent in the day. I see you waving, Sylvia. All right. So today, my task is to talk about what is hybrid publishing. But before I do that, I want to let you know just a little bit about me, since most of you may not know me. So again, my name is DeAndrea Matthews. I am an author of six books, uh, five book chapters, and two academic articles in uh, national journals. So that's just a little bit about my author journey that again began back in 2012 right here with this group. So I've come a long way in that time and I'd be happy to, to share any of that with you. So I know I'll be checking occasionally to see if there are any questions. So if you do have questions as we are talking and sharing today, just drop them in the comment box and I will do my very best to answer them for you. So in addition to being an author, I'm also the Director of Diversity and Inclusion. I oversee the diversity of our faculty, students, and staff, as well as all of our pipeline programs at Wayne State University School of Medicine. I do a lot of local and national recruitment of students who are underrepresented in medicine and those who would like to pursue medical careers. In addition to that, I am a hybrid publisher, so I am the president and founder of Claire Alden Publications. Claire Alden Publications is a hybrid publishing company that is Better Business Bureau accredited, as well as a member of the Independent Book Publishers Association. So that tells all the technical stuff. So let me tell you, hi, Shar, glad to join. Glad you're able to join us. So I want to tell you a little bit about where my love for reading and writing started till we get into all the technical, uh, before we get into all the technical stuff. So as a young person in elementary school, First of all, in my home, in my childhood home, I realized that this is not everyone's story, but in my childhood home, we had a ton of books. We had our own, our own library in our home, and we had a lot of the classics. So we had Shakespeare, we had Robert Louis Stevenson, we had, again, just a lot of what I consider the classic authors in my childhood home growing up. So even, you know, as a toddler, you know, going into a young person, you know, I had these books and they were always around me. So I read a lot of those books, but fast forward to being in school, in elementary school, at my elementary school, which is no longer around, Fairbanks Elementary, I was in a, in third, fourth, and fifth grade, we participated in what was called Reading Road Quiz. So Reading Road Quiz was a game show with public television that allowed children to read books and then participate in the game show to win prizes and other ga uh, other rewards for their school. So I always say we read about 100 books each time we participated. I have no idea how many books it was. It seemed like 100 books to a young child, but that's really where my love of reading began. So I knew back then that I wanted to be an author one day. So it started very early on. So when I became a part of the Motown Writers Network in 2012, it really began to, uh, my, my love for reading, my love for the word, written word, my desire to become an author really began to take shape. And it really lit something back in me that had been dormant for a very long time. So that's kind of my story about how I came into reading, writing, and just my love of all things literary. I am also an international speaker, so I've been an international speaker since 2013, and that's something else that I really enjoy doing. So 
Uh, that's enough about me. Let's talk about what we're here to talk about today. So today, there are a couple of things that I want to share with you as we talk about the hybrid publishing journey. So the first thing I'll share with you is what is hybrid publishing. I'll also share with you the Independent Book Publishing Association's hybrid publisher criteria because there are specific criteria that us as hybrid publishers should follow and it is a specific list that I'm going to share with you as well as some personal experience with dozens of clients. So I see you joining us. Thank you, Dr. Clark, for being here. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Denise. All right. So thank you all for joining. I'm glad you're here. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comment box. There is going to be a specific segment for questions and answers at the end, but I'm happy to answer your questions as we go along. So I'll occasionally glance over there to see if you have any questions while we're talking. So we're going to talk about what hybrid publishing is. We're going to talk about the IBPA criteria. I'm going to give you just a couple examples of what has happened with some of my clients and then talk about the benefits of working with a hybrid publisher, a legitimate hybrid publisher, because some people use the term hybrid publisher when they're really a vanity press, which is not the same. So I'll end up before our Q&A talking about the benefits of working with a legitimate hybrid publisher. So what is hybrid publishing? So the term hybrid really means a cross between two things. So if you think about what the term hybrid means, when it comes to hybrid publishing, hybrid publishing is really a cross between traditional publishing and self-publishing. It is not the same as a vanity press that sometimes is very much only interested in the money. They really are not interested in the editorial value of your manuscript. They're not interested in if that manuscript will be commercially successful or not. Uh, so we're not going to talk a lot about vanity presses, but being a hybrid publisher, it's more like a self-publishing service company, but we have to maintain, of course, the Independent Book Publishers Association criteria, which I'll talk about in just a few. So Hybrid publishing is a specific business model. Now, because it is hybrid publishing, different hybrid publishers have various aspects of the business model. And once I get into the specific criteria, you'll see how some of these elements can change based on the hybrid publisher. However, the standards are the same. So we all have to meet the same standards as far as producing professional industry standard books. So it's more than just taking a client's money and just producing it without going through the entire editorial process. And one of the things that I've developed as the president and founder of Clear Alden Publications is the five pillars of book creation. So that's something that I uh, developed so that I can really be able to explain the process to our authors and in explaining the process, they have a better understanding of all the different aspects of what's offered because it's not just about taking the manuscript and returning a book in hand. It's much more than that because becoming an author is becoming essentially an entrepreneur, a business owner. So the five pillars of book creation with Claire Alden Publications is book production, book design, book publishing, book marketing, as well as book distribution. So I won't get into all five of those today unless there are specific questions, but those five pillars really describe the process in full. And if you break down those five pillars, good morning, Dwayne. If you break down those five pillars, it really breaks down into over a hundred independent steps that it takes to go from blank page to published author. So that's just a little bit about the process that I go through with my company itself. But hybrid publishing overall is a business model. Now, according to the uh, Independent Book Publishers Association, and you'll hear me say that in IBPA, that's what IBBA stands for, Independent Book Publishers Association. It's a national organization, uh, and a lot of hybrid publishers as well as self-publishers and traditional publishers are, are um, members of this organization. And this organization, again, offers professional development through their annual conference, as well as other perks, member perks and benefits for being a part of this organization, uh, again, that oversees the independent public, the publishing industry and really provides a lot of information as to what's going on, uh, news that you need to know, uh, breaking news in the industry and other things of that nature. So a lot of times as a member of IBPA, we hear about things before it goes public with uh, anything going on in the publishing industry. Good morning, Marilyn. Thank you for joining us. All right, so I'll go through the independent publishing, uh, independent book publishing criteria as far as what a hybrid publisher is, and then 
I will continue to look over and see if we have any questions. Thank you for sharing that link for the Independent Book Publishers Association, Sylvia. I appreciate that. All right, so hybrid publishing is a business model in which you must define your mission and vision for publishing. What does that mean? A lot of times with hybrid publishers, they have a specific mission and or vision, and they also have a specific genre that they are most interested in. Uh, they have a specific subgenre, even perhaps, that they are most interested in publishing. So if you were dealing with a hybrid publisher, you're considering having someone else uh, publish your book for you versus self-publishing, make sure that the hybrid publisher that you're working with has a specific mission, mission, has a specific vision, and they know what genre they want to publish because that's really what one of the factors that distinguish hybrid publishers from your vanity presses and your others that are really just out for the money. The vanity presses aren't really interested in what type of genre it is. They just want to take the money and essentially uh, publish your book. So one of the things that you'll notice is a vision, a mission, and a particular or preferred genres that you're interested in. For example, and I don't have this in front of me, I'm going off the top of my head with this, but Clear on the Publications really are our target market are first-time authors. I am most interested in providing professional services to first-time authors, and most of my authors are over the age of 45. Now, under the age of 45, you know, a lot of people are tech savvy and they can really go through the self-publishing process on their own. But I dived into the market as a hybrid publisher because I wanted to provide services to people who were like me, who didn't know a lot about the industry, that wanted to get their book published. And, you know, I learned a lot in the process. I am a book nerd. I am a researcher. So I dug in deep and I started going to conferences and professional development and podcasts and everything you could think of to, to gain the information that I have now that I've been using over the last few years as a part of my professional experience. I didn't want anyone else to have to go through that steep learning curve. So I said, okay, becoming a publisher will really help those people who have a desire to publish a book, don't really know the process to go through, may not be tech savvy. So again, a lot of our authors are over the age of 45. Now, not all of them are, but a lot of them are. The other thing is my desire is to diversify the publishing industry. Now, what does that mean? If you've ever heard me speak before, you've heard me talk about this very uh, alarming for me statistic about children's books. Now, I don't publish children's books specifically, but if you look at diversity in publishing, this is one of the first stats that comes up. And it says that 29% of the uh, diverse diversity in children's books are published by, say for example, if you're looking specifically at African American authors, um, only 29% of African American authors who are publishing for, uh, publishing children's books are publishing about their community. What does that mean? If only 29% of the authors are of the community publishing about their community, and that means that 71% are others publishing about our community. So as an African-American author myself, I wanna make sure that we're diversifying the publishing industry, we're changing those statistics, and making sure that we are the ones representing our voices in our community. So ultimately, that's what it means to diversify the publishing industry for me, making sure that we are capturing our voices, our stories, our experiences, and we're publishing them ourselves instead of letting other people tell our story. That's also part of the mission and vision that I have for Claire Alden Publications. I'll share this uh, quick story with you as well because, you know, I was the kid that sat under my grandparents and liked hearing their stories. And, you know, I'm kind of the family archivist that kind of has it all up here. But I encourage people now to really begin to leave written legacies. That's the other part of what I do and why I'm so passionate about it. I want to be able to leave written legacies so that families three, four generations from now will have something to look back on that lets them and other people know about their family histories. And that's why a part of the genres that I really fell in love with are memoirs and autobiographies. So that's really where I flow. I love hearing the stories of others. I love bringing out uh, those little known facts and those historical references that really 
uh, bring our stories to life and people need to know about it. People need to hear about it. They need to know about the things that we've experienced in our communities, in our neighborhoods and in our lives. So going back to that uh, list from IBPA, the first one is defining a mission, vision, a mission and vision for publishing and also knowing what specific genre that you are most interested in publishing. The other thing that you should be able to do is to vet submissions. It is a red flag if they just accept anybody who comes to them and will publish their book. As a hybrid publisher, you want to be able to vet the submissions. That means that you're not going to publish everything just because someone is willing to pay. If someone brings me something and it is not one of the genres that I'm interested in publishing or it has, you know, some uh, filthy vulgar language and, you know, I had one person come to me one time that was very explicit about the drug transactions and how to, you know, break it down and cut it up and all of this. I am so sorry. I am not the publisher for you. So you have to be able to vet the submissions and know what you're willing to publish, what's going to represent your brand and what is not. As a hybrid publisher, you also want to publish under your own imprint. You should have your own imprint. You should have your own ISBN numbers, and it should be registered to your publishing company. That means that you're operating as a legit hybrid publishing company and that you are operating with integrity. The other thing is to be able to publish to industry standards. Thank you so much, Eric. I'm glad. All right, you should also be able to publish to industry standards. What does that mean? That means that the content inside the book meets certain standards. That also means that the production that you go through in order to produce that book meets certain standards. And all of that is listed on the IBPA site. Um, you can find it under the hybrid publisher criteria. And then also there is an industry standards checklist for a professionally published book. These are two documents that guide us as hybrid publishers, and we must meet the these criteria and meet these standards in order to produce a professional industry standard book. So when you hear me talking about producing a professional industry standard book, it's not just something that sounds good, that goes on the website. I'm very serious about that because everything that I produce, it's got my name on it. So I want it to represent me well, but also I want to make sure that it meets these standards because this is my name and my company name that's out there. The other thing is to ensure editorial design and production quality. Now, going back to those five pillars of book creation, breaking it down in that way helps me to make sure that the editorial design and production quality is the way that it is supposed to be. Uh, as a hybrid publisher, they also encourage us to pursue a range of publishing rights. This is true. I hope that everyone as a self-published author is doing this as well. But when it says pursue a range of publishing rights, that means that you should not only produce a print book, you should also produce digital books. So everyone pretty much is doing ebook and paperback nowadays. That's great. But have you considered publishing in foreign languages? Have you considered publishing an audio book? Have you considered publishing in Braille or other uh, formats or with other publishing rights? Again, that goes into uh, a lot of different things. There's so many different things that you can do when it comes to a range of publishing rights, but at least having an ebook and a paperback is, is bare minimum. But as a hyper publisher, you want to pursue it. You want to consider it. Those are things that you can think about. As a hyper publisher, we are also called to provide distribution services. Uh, we are to help to develop sales and marketing strategies with the author in order to get the book in front of their target audience. So what does it mean as far as distribution services? You want to look at the possibility of working with wholesalers. You want to consider as many online retailers as possible in order to be able to get the book in front of as many people as possible. You want to consider any specialty re retailers and niche organizations where you can make the book available for your authors. So that all goes under providing distribution services. The other thing that hybrid publishers are uh, asked to meet is to demonstrate respectable sales. Now, many of us know, <laughs> I see you, Vanessa. So many of us know that the average author only sells about 250 copies. So if you know that the average author only sells about 250 copies, what are you doing as a hybrid publisher to see that your authors exceed at least the average author? So I don't want any of my authors to be just an average author. I want to exceed that 250 mark, definitely. But as you develop a sales and marketing strategy, as you help them with press releases and media kits and other things that hybrid publishers should be helping you with, you want to help them to demonstrate respectable sales and again, be able to continue the book promotions long after your first book launch event. 
And then the final criteria is to pay authors a higher than standard royalty. It's important to be transparent when it comes to royalties, especially when you're considering the author's personal investment. Now with a hybrid publisher, you are uh, paying for the professional services. So you want to make sure that they have an opportunity to make that money back and continue to make royalties for the books that will sell uh, or, or the book royalties that they'll receive as a result of all the distribution options that you have now provided to your author. So you want to be transparent about it. You want to make sure that they understand the investment that they're making and how to make that money back. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is standard royalties. And when I say standard royalties, standard royalties refers to the traditional publishing industry. So standard royalties typically range from 10 to 25% of net sales. When it comes to the hybrid publishing model, most authors, and again, it varies depending on the um, platform, depending on all online retailers. And if you're a self-published author, you already know this, different uh, retailers have different formulas for calculating your royalties. But with most hybrid publishers, the authors earn between 30 to 60% of their royalties, particularly if they're using a print-on-demand model where there is little to no inventory to be maintained. So that's something else to keep in mind. So those are all of the criteria from the Independent Book Publishers Association that should be maintained in the hybrid publishing business model. All right, so I don't see any questions, so I'm going to keep going. Great. I'm glad that you are getting detailed information and that you're learning a lot about the hybrid publishing process. All right, so the other thing that I'll share with you about hybrid publishing is this is an author subsidized model, yes, but the author subsidized model does not relieve the publisher of its editorial, design, marketing, sales, or distribution responsibilities. Just because the author is making an investment into the professional services that are provided to get their book to market, that does not mean that it does not have to go through the editorial process, the design process, the marketing process, making sure that you understand the sales process and how your book will be distributed and where. So all of those responsibilities are still on the publisher to be able to explain to the author. Okay, vanity presses, like I see it, are not um, selective necessarily in what they publish. And for self-publishing, the author is the one in the publisher role. So if you are the author that is self-publishing, you're in the publisher role. So you take on the responsibility for the editorial process, design, marketing, sales, and distribution responsibilities. So an author can subsidize the cost of their print runs uh, but they own their physical, physical copies outright and there are no minimum sales required and they aren't required to purchase a certain amount of books. So these are just some additional differences between the hybrid publishing model and maybe vanity presses or other models that are out there. So again, uh, some companies require that you purchase so many books as a part of the, their, their package that they're offering you or that you have to have, um, you know, they own uh, the copyright or they own, you know, whatever. But in the hybrid publishing model, the author maintains their rights. And that's an important part of the process. Before you sign off on anything, you want to make sure that you are not signing away the rights to the book that you wrote. It's very important for my authors to know that they maintain 100% of their copyright when I submit their manuscript to the U.S. Copyright Office, it is in their name. They receive the certificate. So it's important for them to understand their book rights remain their own. I don't want your book rights. I have my own books that I want to take care of, but I just want to provide services to you to be able to get your book to market and have your story be told. All right, Stephanie, I see that you said, how do you put your book into a foreign language? Good question. So there are various ways that you can translate it into foreign language. It's not something that I've done specifically yet. It's something I've been looking into because there are different services that I want to be able to offer moving forward through Clear Alden Publications. But if you are looking to translate your book into a foreign language, the first thing that you want to do is connect with someone who speaks that language, who is willing to translate it for you. Now, there are a lot of services out there that provide it. You might be able to find it on Fiverr. You might be able to find it on ReadSeat, or you might be able to find it on some of these other sites. But but that's important because just because someone can translate a book into a language does not mean that they are translating it. You know, I'll say it like this. Different um, cultures, even though, say, 25 different cultures speak Spanish, within those 25 cultures, there are different dialects. 
And you want to be sensitive to that. You want to make sure that when your book is translated into a foreign language, that it is culturally appropriate, but you're also using the right form of different words and things of that nature. So having someone whose first language is the language that you're translating it into, for me, is, is you know the first point of business because you want to make sure that you have translated it accurately and that it's something that someone who is native to that language will understand and appreciate. So that's kind of where it starts. And from there, you just go through the same process of editing, et cetera, et cetera, but you're doing it in a different language, a language that you may not be familiar with. So you would have to contract out or to hire someone else to be able to handle these parts of the service. But it goes through the same techno, technical process, technical aspects of what you're offering as a publisher is just in a different language. Good question. All right. So uh, like I was saying, you know, as a hybrid publisher with Claire Alden Publications, the author retains 100% of their rights uh, to their manuscript. My company does not get paid based on the number of books and author sales. Now, I know that that's one of the aspects that differs between hybrid publishing companies. I don't collect royalties off of the author's book. That was a decision that I made in establishing my business model. I only get paid based on the professional services that I provide. That's it. So, yes, I want you to make sales. Yes, I'm going to help you with, you know, again, the press release and book marketing strategies and things of that nature, just thinking outside the box as far as what you can do to promote your book. But I'm not making money on that. So I don't earn any 0% of the author's royalties. The author's royalties go to them. So whatever their cut is as far as after the online retailer or the um, POD retailer takes their cut, that goes directly to the author. That's one of the things that distinguishes me as a hybrid publisher from others because I don't take any of the royalties from the author. Now, I know that, you know, some business models, some hybrid publishers won't agree with that, but that is the decision that I made. So the only money that my company receives is from the professional services provided to actually produce that industry standard book. Would this be the same process for creating a book in Braille? Absolutely. And I mentioned Braille separately, but Braille is another language, just like French, Spanish, or anything else. But yes, it would be the same process for creating a book in Braille. That person who speaks Braille is going to be your best friend in that process for translating that book. Absolutely. You want to find somebody who's fluent in that language and make sure that they're a part of that process each step of the way. They could be your proofreader. They could be, you know, it doesn't have to be a technical role, but you'll want to incorporate that person some type of way, whether it's proofreading as an advanced reader, as a beta reader, or somewhere in the process, uh, translation, et cetera, in order to be active in that role. That way you have that trusted individual that can really speak to if this is translated properly, if this is really going to speak to the target audience that you want it to um, go to. The next question is, what should you expect from a hybrid publisher in regards to marketing and distribution? It's a good question. So before you enter into a relationship with them, you could find out first if they're a part of the Independent Book Publishers Association, because if they are, then you already know the criteria that they're expected to, to to fall under and to monitor and respect. If they're not, then you want to ask them specifically, what do they offer as far as marketing? And again, uh, it's a, it's a range. Some people offer, you know, just a little bit of marketing as far as, okay, we'll uh, help to promote it this way and have, you know, maybe three ways that they work with you to promote your book. Um, others might do other things. You know, all of our authors are listed on our website. It links back to their site or back to their Amazon page, again, because we don't get any money from the distribution of their books. We don't get any royalties from that. But you want to ask specific questions as far as what they offer for marketing and distribution. Are they connected to to um, a wholesaler? Are they, do they use online retailers? Do they have another distribution process? You want to ask those questions just to get a better idea or make sure that you read through the materials that they're presenting to you in your initial, initial consultation and it should spell out what that looks like. I know that, you know, probably when I meet with people, it's a little, uh, it's, it puts them off a little bit because it's so detailed with the information that I give them. I believe my agreement is maybe eight pages, but I'm very transparent and I spell out every aspect of it, including how they can uh, cancel the contract if they decide, you know, within a certain amount of days that they change their mind, what that process is like, how they receive their materials back. All of that should be spelled out in that uh, agreement, including what your marketing options are, what your distribution options are. All of that should be a part of the conversation before you sign anything and decide that you're going to use that person. I also encourage you to do some comparison 
a hybrid publisher should not be uh, afraid of you doing comparison with other people. Compare the prices, compare the packages, compare what they're offering to you. Do they actually offer any books as a part of their package or are the books separate and it's just producing the information and, and taking it to market itself? What are they offering as a part of their packages and what does that look like for you as an author? That way you know up front, will I want to uh, get some additional marketing, which is always a plus, you know, additional uh, book promotion and things of that can never hurt, but know exactly what they're offering to you and know what you as an author want so that you can go out and again, find some additional services if they're not offering everything that you want, or perhaps find someone else who has, who has a more inclusive package. So those are the types of things that I would suggest when it comes to um, expectations of a hybrid publisher. Very good question, Denise. Thank you. All right, so I just want to share a couple things uh, uh, with you as far as people that I've worked with, uh, because unfortunately in this business, you do hear way too many horror stories. I won't share uh, the specific horror stories, but I'll just share a couple experiences that people have had. Uh, one of the authors that joined with Claire Alden Publications early on was Dr. Michael J. Rice. He is the Associate Director of Admissions and Recruitment for Ohio University Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine. He's also the National Membership Chair for the National Association of Medical Minority Educators. And he is the author of a book called The Sumner Seven. Now, The Sumner Seven, when I'm... Um, how we met was kind of funny because we have some other um, organizations that we work with together. And he happened to hear that I was a hybrid publisher. So he said, hey, I have this book that I've been working on. And he had been doing literally years of research about his hometown and the first school for African-Americans uh, in that hometown. It was the first public school for African-Americans in West Virginia. And the Sumner Seven is the name of that book. So he did a wonderful job with this historical nonfiction book. Uh, talking about, again, the origin of that first public school in Parkersburg, West Virginia. He was featured in his local newspaper uh, before he published the book, while he was still doing the research, and also got featured again once the book was published. And then when I met his wife, uh, the year after his book was published, she gave, gave me the biggest hug, and she thanked me because she said that her husband is now somewhat of a local hero in their hometown. So that always uh, makes me feel good. Even after the process is gone, uh, the process is over, you know, you still have these great Great relationships because as a hybrid publisher I develop relationships with authors it's not just about publishing the books publishing the books is great but it really is about the relationship and you want to make sure that you provide not only good customer service but great relationships with people I can call any of our authors up any of the people that I work with and they not only have good things to say which is a plus but we've got a good relationship and again whether it's a referral or whether coming back you know my goal is to work with first-time authors but I'm in the season now where people are coming back saying hey I want to publish another book I want you to do it for me that lets Let's me know that I've done a good job building that relationship, building the trust and operating in integrity. Um, someone else that I've worked with, uh, Pastor Michael Robinson, his book is called My Father's Blood. Now, when I met him, of course, a lot of people have come by word of mouth referrals, which is great. Uh, but when I met him, he had already he was already in the process of trying to get his manuscript published. He had gotten the book cover image done, the front cover image done. He had also submitted his book to an editor. He had, the, the editor had had his book at the point where I met him about five months. Now, mind you, the editing process can take a while, especially if you're going through copy editing, developmental editing, research editing, etc. But this person was only doing copy editing and it had been five months and it still was not complete. So he was just distraught. He was frustrated with the whole process. So I was able to restore his faith in publishers, but not just restore his faith in publishers, but restore his faith in African-American businesses. Too often, African-American entrepreneurs get a bad rep because of something that somebody else has done. So I was very happy to be able to restore his faith. And he has become one of the biggest referrers of people to get their book published, which is always um, a good thing. And if you want to see his testimony, I recorded his testimony at one of his book events. It is on uh, the Claire Alden Publications YouTube page. So I encourage you to go and subscribe to the Claire Alden YouTube page and not only look at his testimony, but check out some of the other great videos on there as well. And then Shar Halliburton, who is on the live stream today. So Shar Halliburton came to me. We actually met um, 
on Instagram and we followed each other's pages and one day she reached out to me and asked that I kind of mentor her in the publishing process. So she posted a review on our Facebook page, which you can go and read about her experience. And then she also, what I try to do is I try and go in above, be, above and beyond. I try to not only provide what it is that I am contracted to do, whatever the agreement is, but I try and go above and beyond because I want to exceed expectations. Uh, I just believe that that is how you conduct good business and that's how you treat people well. So one of the things that I did was I created a manual just for her. Uh, I think I kind of surprised her because it had her picture on it and her, her business name on it. And it was a manual that had all the information that we had covered in all of our sessions as a handy reference tool. I want to make sure that what we go over, you have something that is going to um, be a quick reference guide, something to refer back to, because guess what? We're not going to remember everything from every session. That's why it's important to not only give um, your authors, but whoever you're working with, give them something in writing that they can refer back to in the middle of the night where they got questions and want to make sure that they made the right decision. They should not be questioning uh, or having buyer's remorse. It's okay to ask questions, but having buyer's remorse is not something that you want your people to have. So uh, those are just three quick examples of people that I've worked with who have uh, great stories about their hybrid publishing process or learning more about hybrid publishing and learning about the publishing industry itself because I am a lifelong learner. I believe in continuing to learn about the industry. The industry is constantly changing. So you want to make sure that you stay on top of everything that's going on in the industry to be able to continue to provide the best services possible. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about before I open it up and ask if there are any specific questions is the benefit or are the benefits of working with a legitimate hybrid publisher. So working with a legitimate hybrid publisher, and thank you, Sylvia, for sharing our Instagram page. The benefits of working with a legitimate hybrid publisher, number one is there is approval at every step. This is important because you want to make sure that you, are com that you are communicating with them, but also that they have a role in the process. So legitimate hybrid publishers don't take your money and then you don't hear from them for months. Hi legitimate hybrid publishers make sure that you approve every aspect of that publishing process. So again, from the customized book cover to, uh, again, approving the final manuscript and all of the edits and things of that nature, every step of the process. And again, following the five pillar um, book creation process, even if you're just looking at the book publishing aspect of it, it's numerous steps. And you want to get that author's input because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you've produced something that not only you're proud of, but they're proud of as well. The second benefit of working with a legitimate hyper publisher, regular communication. I already touched on this a little bit. Thanks, Char, for saying that. I appreciate it. It was a great experience for me as well. Uh, not only, you know, is regular communication important, but input both ways. I don't want to, you know, take for granted that I know everything because I don't. I am going to offer professional recommendations and I'm already getting ahead of myself, but that regular communication is key. And, you know, Claire Alden Publications has been fortunate. We don't just have authors here in Michigan, but we have authors in other states as well. Right now we have, we are represented in Michigan, Ohio, Alabama, and California. So you can imagine I'm not flying to California every month, every couple of weeks to be able to meet with my clients. So that regular communication Communication is important. So whether it's in person and you can actually sit and have a cup of coffee or whether it is by email, which a lot of our communications are by email or whether it's by phone or video chat, you want to make sure that you have regular communications and you're letting them know what's going on. I'll even uh, be uh, transparent because January this year, I went through a very tumultuous time personally in my life. But even during that time, I'm letting my authors that I'm working with know, hey, XYZ just happened to me. Um, I'm still committed to your project, but I just want to let you know that I'm going to take this week off because blah, 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 blah. Okay. And for those of you who know me, know that, you know, our son was killed in January. My mother, you know, had some serious health challenges as well as my daughter having serious health challenges. It was back to back to back. And it, it did throw me for a loop, but people understand that life happens. Life happens to them as well. But as long as you're communicating with them, they understand, Hey, this person is real. They've got a life too. Regular communication is important, not just in the regular flow of the process, but also when things happen and you need to take a break or take a couple of days as the publisher yourself. So regular communication is very important. Uh, and it lets them know again, that it's about the relationship and not just the business transaction.
Number three, as far as benefits of working with a legitimate hybrid publisher, professional recommendations, and I already kind of alluded to this, but legitimate hybrid publishers provide professional recommendations ba based on their research and their years of experience. You know, as we continue this process, you continue to learn more and more, and you want to let people know, okay, yep, this is what you are uh, saying, or this is what you're, you, you think you want and that's fine, but Hey, let me share this with you. And you give them either case studies or you give them research, you give them links to, to look at things. And really all they need to know is this is why I feel X, Y, and Z. This is why you should not have text ease on your cover. This is why, you know, it might not be a good idea to have that selfie as your author photo on the back of that book. So, you know, whether it's something, you know, comical like that, or whether it's something that's a little more technical, you want to be able to offer professional recommendations based on industry standards. Most most authors don't know what those industry standards are. They don't know, again, um, what uh, is popular in specific genres, especially if you, if you specialize in a specific genre. You're very familiar with what's acceptable, what's not, what's preferred, what's not, whether it's the font, whether it's the line spacing, whatever it could be as far as formatting or typesetting or any number of things. So it's your job to be able to re make recommendations to them so that they understand what their options are. The true benefit is they don't have to learn every aspect of the process. With your professional recommendations, they still end up with a quality industry standard book. And then the last benefit that I'll share with you as far as working with a legitimate hybrid publisher, you are empowering authors. So with each transaction, with each professional recommendation, legitimate hybrid publishers know that when the authors win, you win. It is about relationship. Ultimately, yes, they want to produce that book, but legitimate hybrid publishers help to promote their authors. They recommend them for book rewards. They seek reviews from reputable agencies. It's a collaborative relationship that is a win-win for both parties. So that's all that I really have to share with you about hybrid publishing. If you have any specific questions, I can answer them for you now. So go ahead and drop them in the comment box. I don't see any questions yet. Uh, but if you have questions, now is the time to drop them in the box so that I can answer them for you. I hope that I've shared some valuable information with you about the hybrid publishing process. Again, this is something that I'm very passionate about. Hybrid publishing has only been popular, uh, i say, within the last five years. I know the vanity presses have been around much longer than that. But hybrid publishing became a legitimate aspect of the Independent Book Publishers Association a few years ago, which is why they developed this criteria um, for hybrid publishers to follow. All right, Denise says, how many authors do you represent? That's a very good question. So. Right now, I have represented 16 different authors. Um, I started my hybrid publishing company in 2017. On average, I was doing about five to eight authors um, per year. I've slowed down a little bit. Um, for various reasons, I want to be much more detailed in the process. There are things that I'm learning in, uh, again, various times of the year that are better to publish. So rather than rushing a book out, I'd much rather wait, uh, submit it for a forward review or a review from Kirkus or any of those other agencies to be able to have much more traction when the book comes out. So there are various reasons why I'm, I'm pulling back and not doing as many authors per year. But right now we're at about 16 authors that Claire Alden Publications has represented. Very good question. And all of them have been first-time authors. We also produced our first anthology this year. We're going to be working on volume two of that anthology. Uh, that's another exciting way for new authors to get out there, to get their feet wet, if you would, in the industry so that um, they can learn a little bit more about the process without committing to a full-length book themselves. All right, Shirley says, can you give an idea of the cost and time frame from start to publication? That's a very good question. So as far as the time frame, again, I was talking a little bit just now about the time frame. On average, I would say it takes anywhere from four to six months. And a lot of that could be, again, the editing process. It depends on how long the manuscript is. Uh, right now, one of the manuscripts that I'm working on is over 300 pages. 
uh, plus photos and references and charts and all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, but she has a great story and I'll just give you a little snippet. So uh, one of the books that will come out later this year uh, is the author is Emmeline King. And she is the first African American transportation designer for Ford Motor Company. So she is having she has a tell all memoir that we're working on, and again, very extensive editing that uh, we're going through because we want to make sure that we represent her story right, but also we ain't trying to get sued. So uh, we're just you know having fun with that process. But on average, it takes about four to six months. It depends on how many pages it is. It depends on again if it's a poetry book, it takes a little bit long, a little bit shorter time than that. If it is a full length um, autobiography, then it might take a little bit longer, but those are just a couple examples as far as the length of time. Now, as far as my prices, it ranges. Um, the smallest package, I think, is a $1,500 package. You do get 50 books plus um, 100 promo cards. All of this information is on my website. I'm kind of going off the top of my head right now. The largest package, and let me just tell you the progression because it has been a progression over the last few years. The packages that I've added as a hybrid publisher has been because of the needs of my author. So from that smaller package all the way to the largest package, the lar largest package right now is $3,500. But the reason for that is because in addition to the technical aspects of publishing the book, it also includes an author photo shoot with makeup for the ladies. It also includes your full media kit, including press release and all the other bells and whistles. Um, so it has a lot that's included. That's the top package, the platinum package. And that's for somebody who, you know, uh, needs photos because no, we're not using a selfie on the back of your book. Um, you have those photos that you can use not only for the book itself, but you can use them for your advertisements, for your book promotions. Those pictures become the author's pictures. They get all of their pictures as well as uh, as the publisher having the pictures to use in promotions and in the book itself, etc. So the packages have developed because of the need of the authors themselves. So that's kind of how my process has, has developed. And I hope that answered your question. All right. So can I post my contact information? Absolutely. I will. I know that Sylvia has shared how to connect with me on social media. I believe my website has been shared as well. That's www.clairealden.com. C-L-A-I-R-E-A-L-D-I-N. Clairealden.com. Com. All right, that's contact information. Let's see. Uh, do you represent Christian or faith-based books and genres? So the question to that is no. Even though I am a Christian, uh, as a hybrid publisher, there are specific things that I will consider as far as genres. And no Christian genres, it doesn't have to specifically be Christian fiction or Christian nonfiction. I am only publishing nonfiction right now. That is where I flow the best and that is where my love is. Uh, but no, it's not only Christian based books or genres that we publish. Um, I believe it's on the website. If it's not on the website, I will send out, I'll, I'll put a link in there as far as the, so that I have a guide. It's called the Writer's Guide to Clear All the Publications. And that guide really lists the preferred genres, what we will and will not publish. And again, going into um, just like sp very explicit books, um, I'm not going to publish. Now, the technical language in that guide talks about um, if the, like, if, say if you got a couple cuss words, I don't care about a couple cuss words because, you know, if it, if it lends itself to the development of the character that you are representing, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, just a whole bunch of expletives and like I said, you being real, real detailed in your drug transactions and all of that, that's not for me. I can probably recommend somebody to you, but that is not for me. Great, Vanessa. I'm glad you know Emmeline. She's a wonderful person to work with. I'm going to share my contact information so that you can get in touch with me if you need to, Dwayne. I actually can share my business number. Um, so if you want to get in touch with me and you want to call or text, my business number is 248-571-8227. Again, that's 248-571-8227 is my business number. All right. Tamar says, I'm a technical writer that's working with an emerging author, author to codify 10 sermons into books. That's wonderful. For pastors, your sermons are an excellent way of getting started, getting out there as uh, an author. And again, I've worked with people in addition to being, you know, again, my company kind of continues to expand again, based on people's needs and what they 
want to be able to do. So what I offered, what I started offering last year was the live speakers workshop, because again, like I said, I've been an international speaker since 2013. So I'm also sharing with authors how to become a speaker, what type of speaker you want to become, or what type of speakers there are. How do you really break into that process and how do you create your signature topics, things of that nature. So that's one of the other things that I offer in case someone wants to be a speaker. So there are lots of different things that I am working with in order to build the author community. All right, Tamara, excellent. I, um, I'm happy to talk with you and, and share with you if you have any questions. And if you want to know more about the process, I'm happy to share that as well. So that's all that I have. If there are any other questions, please go ahead and drop them in. If you have not already, uh, went to the website and, and uh, joined my email list, then go ahead and do that. I would love for you to follow me on social media. So if you want to follow the Claire Alden page, uh, it is simply at Claire Alden on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, we do have a Facebook page, Claire Alden Publications, and we do have a YouTube channel, which is also Claire Alden Publications. So please follow that. Even if you're not interested in publishing or you're not at that um, stage of the process yet on our YouTube page. I am posting a um, few times a week now with different topics. I know this week, uh, some of the topics that we've covered, uh, the difference between the prologue and the epilogue. I also talked about the front matter of your book. I talked about the back matter of your book. Um, there's a couple other videos that aren't coming to mind right now, but I'm sharing a couple times a week with just different aspects of the process because my goal is to share as much of the process as possible so that people are more informed. We want to be able to, again, have great books out there that represent Michigan, that represent Detroit well. So uh, I'll continue to share those videos. So please go and subscribe to the Claire Alden Publications channel. If you want to follow me personally, again, I wear lots of different hats. I share not just about writing and publishing, but other things going on with me as well, because, you know, I'm an uh, entrepreneur. I'm also diversity and inclusion director. I do lots of different things, wear lots of different hats. But uh, if you want to follow me personally, uh, all of my social media is at Dr. D.C. Matthews. So D-R-D-C-M-A-T-T-H-E-W-S. So uh, you can follow me again on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. TikTok. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. LinkedIn. So um, those are all the places where you can follow me as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is so much fun because I love sharing what I know. I love empowering people, empowering authors and helping you to be better. So thank you again, Sylvia, for the opportunity. This is my home. This is where I got my start. So anytime you guys need anything, just let me know and I am happy to share it with you. I don't see any additional uh, questions. So I'm going to go ahead and end it right there. Please, if you've learned something or if you have enjoyed this, go ahead and share it, send it to your friends, share it to your timeline and build the Motown Writers and Michigan Literary Network. We are always looking for new authors to be a part of the community. So if you've learned anything today, go ahead and share the live stream and then also be able to follow me as well as Claire Alden Publications to stay in on top of everything that I'm doing, but also to find out some other good information. So thank you for all that you are doing and have a wonderful day. Take care. Again, this is Dr. DeAndrea Matthews. Thank you for your time today.